Good. Well, I thought we had good uh, bye week focus and preparation on things that we wanted to do to try to improve and get better. Uh, players had a few days off with fall break here, so we're actually looking forward to, you know, getting back um, to work today. Um, we're going to be playing, you know, what is the number one team in the nation who's playing at a very high level right now and uh, they're very explosive on offense and still have one of the best defensive teams in the, in, in the country. I think our focus needs to be on uh, attention to detail, doing the little things right, uh, trying to execute the plan against uh, what has been a, a, a very good team in terms of how they do things, whether it's on offense, defense, or special teams. We've had a lot of great games with these guys. I think everybody's been ranked in the top 20 since 2007. Uh, it's kind of become a rivalry game because of the quality of the program, the programs. And, you know, I think Ed has done a really, really good job with, you know, this team this year. Um, you know, they're very efficient in the passing game. Uh, Joe has done a really, really good job at quarterback. Totally different offensive scheme than what they've played in the past in terms of uh, have capability to create balance in their offense with a really good runner. Um, and a good offensive line, uh, but they also spread you out, create some matchup problems because of the great skill guys that they have, you know, outside in their wide receiver core. Uh, defensively, uh, they're always very well coached team that um, plays really sound fundamentally. They've always got good guys in the back end, which they certainly do this year in terms of the cover people, um, and they got great team speed, so they're really good on special teams. So. Uh, there's not a lot of weaknesses in what you see uh, in this team. And when you play teams like this, I think the most important thing you can do is focus on what you have to do to prepare and know that execution is going to be critical in the game and uh, try to have a great week in terms of how you practice and prepare for the game and focus on that. You know, you guys always ask me, what are you going to do different this week uh, because you're playing the number one team in the country? Well. You know, every game that we play is an important game, uh, especially when you're playing in the SEC, especially when you're playing in your division. And this is most certainly an important game. But if there was a better way to do it, uh, we'd already be doing it. Uh, so I think that, you know, our, our players are pretty comfortable in you know, our weekly preparation of what we try to do, and that's what we want them to stay, stay focused on. And um, that, that's how we're going to try to approach it. What have you learned over the years with a game like this and the hype around it? How, how have you learned how to manage that? Well, I think the, the big thing you want the players to do is not get involved in the hype surrounding the game uh, or even think about the implications of the game, uh, but prepare for the game uh, as if um, this is the best team you've played and the player that you're going to play is the best player you played against at uh, his position all year long. and. Therefore, you're going to need to challenge yourself to play your best and be your best as a football player and stay focused you know, on that and not the distractions that surround the game relative to implications or whatever uh, gets created relative to the circumstance of the game. Uh, Coach, what's the practice plan at quarterback today and going forward this week? Right. Well, you know, been pretty consistent on the message with – Tua, um, you know, if he can play in the game, it'll be a game time decision. Um, you know, he did practice two days last week. We'll see where he's at today, and then we'll manage the reps accordingly. Uh, and when I say that, we cannot predict, you know, if he goes out there today and he looks good, uh, then his rep count is going to go up, and we'll prepare him as if he's going to have an opportunity to play in the game. If he has a setback during the week, all uh, right, there's you know, we can't really control that, but that would change the plan. Uh, the way we practice on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you know, both quarterbacks are going to get pretty much the same reps, uh, and that's probably how we'll manage it this week in terms of their preparation. Stay back there with Brett. LSU's third down defense is a lot better this year than it has been in the past. Is that a product of the new offensive scheme you mentioned, or is there something specifically that they do on third down? You're talking about their offense on third down? Oh, they're a completely different scheme. You know, they'll, they've been an empty, like, um, at least 80% of the time, probably on third down. Uh, they like to see what you're in. 
um, and and then try to you know take advantage of it however best they can relative to the quarterback kind of knowing what you're in or uh, them getting the best play called versus what you're in. So uh, they've been very effective in making the defense declare itself so they can see what you're in and then doing a good job of executing um, and taking advantage of it. How much progress have you seen from Christian Harris this year, given that he had never played the linebacker position before? Well, he's done a good job, and uh, he's really conscientious, works hard at it. Um, uh, I think the more reps he gets in practice and preparation, uh, the better he plays in the game. He's a very explosive player. He can run fast. He's a good cover guy. He plays well in space. So um, we're, we're pleased with the progress that he's made. Uh, we still have work to be done as you know, each and every week presents some new challenges, especially for the young guys. And uh, But he's been very conscientious in his preparation. And I think that's all we can ask at this point. And he has continually improved as the season has gone on. Up front here with John. I had uh, two kind of re obviously related questions. First off, Joe, you talked about the new system. How good a job has, has Joe Burrow done and them fitting the system to him and, and vice versa? Well, I, I think that um, Joe is very capable of um, making every throw. Um, I think he's very bright in terms of throwing the ball the, the right place relative to the defense. Uh, I think he's very athletic. So sometimes when those plays aren't there, he extends plays and makes plays down the field. And he also has the capability of running uh, and creating some problems for the defense from that standpoint. Uh, so he's a very good scrambler, I guess, to run or to throw. Uh, and their receivers do a really good job when he does extend plays of um, playing scramble rules and trying to get themselves open so he has some options. So I think he fits the scheme very well, but I think he's a very talented guy, and I think he'd do well in any system. Uh, but because this is more of a spread system now, uh, I think he can see what's happening and make good decisions, and he's been very effective. Had obviously had a lot of receivers that were very talented, having great NFL careers. And now they've got guys who are talented and, and putting up big numbers as well. What have you seen from that group overall? Well, I, I think this is obviously the most talented group of receivers we played against all season long. Um, you know, they have any number of guys who play. Uh, but, you know, the two guys that are most productive are number one and number two. Um, one plays in a slot, one plays X most of the time. They move guys around, you know, sometimes relative to matchup. Um, those two guys have big time numbers, but, you know, they have a core of guys, five or six guys that play and have roles in what they do. Uh, I think their tight end has played. Moss has played really well for them, you know, this year. So um, all in all, when you put the running back in the category, he's a really good receiver, really hard to cover. Um, create some matchup problems, as well as these receivers that we're talking about. Uh, they have a lot of guys who can make plays on offense, which makes it very challenging for you on defense. Uh, Nick, do you sense that your team maybe uh, is welcoming, get the challenge of playing another number one team as opposed to being the number one team? Uh, I don't talk to them about that. Um, we don't really talk about rankings. Um, you know, it doesn't matter where you're ranked. If you don't have success in what you're doing, you're not going to be ranked there long. So you need to focus on what you need to do to play well in the game and try to do the best job that you can so that you have the best opportunity to have success. And that's what we'd rather have our players focused on. Is there an, an, any other updates injury-wise, um, and especially Najee Harris? Najee Harris is fine. Um, Will Reichert is the only guy that would be questionable still for this game. Um, you know, we talked about Middle Forstall last week. Uh, he's he's out of the game and will be out for several weeks. Um, other than that, I, I think we're okay. Middle here with James. A two-parter, if I may. It can be easy to look at sack numbers and tackle for loss numbers to evaluate a defensive line's performance, but how important is it uh, to remember that sometimes their job may be to aggressively get upfield and sometimes it might be to hold more steady in their gaps? Well, I, I think that good players know what their job is and they need to do their job for the defense to 
I don't care whose defense it is or what system they're playing. Uh, and I, I think when players don't do that, you create open gaps uh, that can certainly create advantage for the other team. So I think it's really, really important that players are disciplined in playing their responsibility and doing their job and understand the big picture that if everybody does that, opportunities will create itself to, you know, make plays. And how does the opposing quarterback affect what you're asking of the defensive line or what their jobs may be in a particular game? Well, I think style of, you know, how a quarterback plays um, can sometimes determine how aggressive that you can be up front, um, for lack of a better term, I think. I mean, if a guy has a lot of mobility skills, I think to be able to rush uh, where you or know that the guy can be a scrambler and you try to keep good leverage on him and uh, good pass rush lanes becomes a little bit more important to push the pocket against the guy rather than you know, taking chances, getting pushed by the quarterback, allowing the guy to scramble. Uh, I think if it's a less mobile quarterback, uh, you can be a little more aggressive and take some chances. So um, you know, the guy we're facing this week has outstanding mobility, so it's going to take discipline pass rush uh, in execution of what we're trying to do to be able to control him in the pocket. Stay on the side with Chris. Hey, Nick, when you look at what you guys are doing offensively now, what they're doing offensively, how much does that underscore how much both teams have changed and the need to be able to evolve and change offensively, especially when you look back seven, eight years ago to you guys? Yeah, well, I, I think that's a very accurate observation in terms of, you know, we've become more of a spread team. Uh, they have come, become more of a spread team. Um, we've done it for a few years now. You know, this is their uh, first time to really sort of open it up, and it's paid tremendous dividends. And I think it it, it certainly um, features the skill players that they have in a very positive way, and the quarterback. Um, and you know, it's a it's it's an indication that when you put these skill players in open positions, uh, how much more difficult it is to defend the space, you know, whether it's vertical or horizontal on the field. Uh, and, you know, you make it more difficult for the defense because they have to make a lot of plays in space. So, um, and, and I think that's the way the game is going now. And if you look at some of the most successful teams offensively, I think they're pretty much all playing that way. Much more difficult to make explosive plays just running the ball. And um, these guys make a ton of explosive plays because of what they've evolved to. How have you seen uh, Najee Harris mature as, as a runner this year? Well, I think Najee has always been a really good back. I think his understanding of um, the opportunity that each play presents, if you trust the whole – and, and sort of read the gaps as they come to you. Uh, I think he's gotten much more comfortable with that, and I think he's had a very positive outcome because of that. Um, and so we're very pleased with what he's been to us as a runner, a blocker, and a pass receiver. And um, he, he's been very effective. Coach. Hi there, back here on the right. Hi. Uh, you were recently inducted into the Louisiana State Hall of Fame. What does that mean to you And when you think back to your time there at LSU? Well, I, I think it's a tremendous honor for me uh, to be recognized uh, anywhere for any awards. But you know, I think when you get these awards, you have to really accept them on behalf of a lot of people uh, who were involved in helping you have the success that you had. Uh, we had a great administration there. Mark em Emmert was the president. Uh, we had, you know, S Skip was a great athletic director. Uh, we had the tools that we needed. Uh, we had a lot of good players who developed very nicely, and we had really good coaches on the staff who did a great job. As you can see, some of those guys are now head coaches and doing very well in their own right. So um, it is a tremendous honor, uh, but I think it's really um, you accept those types of things based on uh, what all the other people did to contribute um, in that success. So um, it, it's really pretty special. All right, Coach, thank you. All right, thank you.